lived from the worldly point of view. As he became a muhaddis, he had students. The students started giving him gifts. He used to wear a new pair of dress every day, every single day, and the one that he would take off, he would not wear it again in his life. Who would do that today? Who has that much today? And he would be riding the best ride. Of course, people of that time, also some of them who did not know the level of this person, the sacrifice of, his, of this person in the early age, they started questioning and objecting that look, for a great alim, for a muhaddis, he shouldn't be living that type of luxurious life. And he's not even working, where is he getting all of this from? So many questions. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, of course, did not care about that. But one thing for sure, why was he doing that? Imam Malik, rahimahullah, was living in Medina Munawwara. He thought that these students, if I ask them to give sadaqah out there, they won't be giving it. They just love to give it to me. Every day he wears a new dress as one of the students have told him that you will get a new dress from me every day. Every day he wears a new one, the other one, he, the one he takes out, he gives it to some of his students or he gives it to some poor people in Medina <coughs> In other words, according to our lunar year, because this is what they used to calculate their lives through with, every year Imam Malik is giving 360 pairs of cloth as a sadaqah in Medina Munawwara. He says, my intention of taking is not to wear it for my soul. If that was the intention, a person like us would pick and choose that, okay, these are some good ones, let me keep them for my souls. We know the old clothes that we have from last five, five, ten years, we don't want to take them out of the clothing and close it and throw them out. I might use them someday. All pairs of shoes are still sitting there. Why? The heart does not accept throwing them out. Not because it will be wasted. It's because they are stuck in my heart. <clears throat> but every day he's giving it out. The question is, what if your student will stop giving you these things tomorrow? His situation would change. Then I would wear my same old sheath that I have. I don't need these new ones. I'm wearing them only just to give them out as a sadaqah. He had students who were in need. There are people who are devoting their lives the way Imam Malik rahimahullah devoted his life for learning. There are people who devoted his life, their lives to learn from Imam Malik now. And of course, who would take care of their needs? It's Imam Malik. His teaching, look at the situation now. Nowadays, I would teach if I get paid. And I'm teaching only because I'm getting paid, and only the hours I would put in teaching is only the hours that I'm getting paid for. And if I'm not getting paid, then forget it. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, his teaching, and at the same time, his providing with his, his students with all of their needs. Accommodation, all of their needs, the living, food, whatever else, the need. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, is providing them by all of this. You can see the institute that Imam Malik has. When you look at the surface, it's only a house. But this is an institution of Islam where Muhaddisin are learning and the teacher is taking care of all of their needs also at the same time. Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim, a person who came from Egypt. One day he's sitting in the gathering of Imam Malik. Look how people are devoting their lives for hadiths. How they learn the hadiths. Really is a lesson for me and you today. That today when we learn few translations of a hadith and then we start giving fatawa about the rules of Islam and we are asking people's opinions about, oh, what's your opinion about this ayah? What's your opinion about this hadith? Subhanallah, my opinion and your opinion about Quran and about hadith, a person who cannot understand the language of hadith will be giving the opinion about Quran and hadith. 
We depend on translators to tell us what does it mean. And then depending on how he translates, accordingly we will understand, and then we are giving our opinion about it. Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim is sitting in the gathering of Imam Malik rahimahullah. A young man comes into the gathering. Imam Malik is in Medina Munawwara. People come for Hajj, Umrah, they come to Medina. They always are visitors there. They would come there in the gathering. So that young man came to Imam Malik. After the there's of hadith, the session of hadith was over. He asked Imam Malik very slowly, he said, Is Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim in this gathering? This was a person from Egypt. Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim was a person from Egypt who came to learn hadith from Imam Malik. <coughs> and this was the 18th year of Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim learning the hadith from Imam Malik sitting in Medina Munawwara in the same place. 18th year that he's learning the hadith, he did not get a chance to go back home. The person came and asked Imam Malik, do you have, is, is Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim in this gathering? He pointed to a student that was sitting very close to him. The closest student that was sitting to Imam Malik means his relationship is very great with his, with his teacher. He says, this is Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim. That young man went and he kissed the forehead of Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim, said something in his ears, whispered to his, in his ears and left. Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim had few tears dripping off his eyes and then he just sat there because waiting, the teacher may teach us something more and I'll benefit from it. When all the other students left, everyone left the gathering, Imam Malik called Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim, asked him, who was that young man who came and said something to you and you started weeping? And then I saw you that you were a little disturbed. He said, that's my son. That's my son. My wife was pregnant when I left, and he was born after I left. I have never seen him up to this day. He informed me that this is my son. he was my son. And he said to me, he whispered to me in my ear, Dad, you don't have to get up. Continue learning. I just came to say salam to you. People are learning hadith. They devoted their lives for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now he says to Imam Malik, when I was coming to Medina, I had told my wife, I may not get the opportunity of coming back home. She told me, then we will meet in Jannah. They learned the hadith by devotion, by respect. The khulafa of the time, now they started knocking the doors of Imam Malik. They want to learn the hadith. A well-known person now. He is now one of the greatest muhaddisin known around. In fact, he was a person that we can say people are waiting for. Why? There is a hadith in Sunan al-Tirmizi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yushiku an yadrib al-nasu akbad al-ibl. فَلَا يَجِدُونَ أَحَدًا أَعْلَمَ مِنْ عَالِمِ الْمَدِينَةِ A time will come when people will be running here and there on their camels, going all directions. They won't find no one more knowledgeable than their scholar of Medina. And the scholars say that he was Imam Malik rahimahullah. At this time, you could not find a person more knowledgeable than him. There was a saying in those days, لا يفتى ومالك في المدينة No one is allowed to give a fatwa as long as Malik is in Medina. And there is a background to the saying, as some of the historians have narrated, that one of those days, a woman died, she was known for virtuousness. As some other women were washing her body, and they're talking, they're chatting, and it so happened that one of these women that was washing the body said a bad thing about her, about this dead person. As soon as she said it, her hand got stuck on that body. 